Hello, this is Wampire. Um, here to respond back to, to comments. Right now, I'm just going to focus on one. Um, if you have a, uh, a question or, or something like that that you need answered, uh, you could visit my website at uh, www.wampire.itgo.com. And on there, I have a fact page of frequently asked questions and also uh, about Stickman because I do get a lot of questions about Stickman as well. Now, uh, if not, you could just shoot me an email at knifebat at yahoo.com. Okay, so knifebat at yahoo.com. Chances are I'll get your, uh, your, your, question, your email there, and uh, I will, I'm more than likely to respond back. So right now on YouTube, I apologize. I'm just kind of staying away from the comments because of the hack bots. But, so the killer method right here, he, he once again um, uh, sent me a comment here, and he says, I've always practiced the quick draw with my folding knife, but I've never thought about using my knife um, folded like this. It adds a new dimension to real-world self-defense. Just have your knife in your hands can make you feel safer. Yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, first thing here is you've always practiced a quick draw with your folding knife. I do think that's important to practice that, you know, um, in sitting down position, uh, standing up, of course, laying down uh, different uh, methods and areas of carry, uh, using your left hand uh, while moving, like running, even rolling, you know, engaging the ground, engaging the wall. These are all different situations while crouching. So yeah, you should practice all of that. And the important thing is to become smooth. I wouldn't say fast, like rapid, I, w I would say try to be smooth as possible. And the reason why I say that is because um, a famous movie, and, and I kind of hate to go to movies to talk about real life, but this movie captures it beautifully. And the movie is Unforgiven, uh, directed by and starring Clint Eastwood. And in it, there is a scene with Gene Hackman where he's talking to a writer about real life uh, quick draw. And in it, you know, he, he's, he's like, it's not about speed. And he pulls out the gun and he's like, that's about as fast as I could draw in real life and not mess up hitting my target. So he says, it's not about speed. What it is, I think he says, it's, it's about having balls of steel to be able to do that and aim and shoot while under pressure, while under life and death pressure, while the, while the other person's shooting at you at you so that's what he talks about that makes perfect sense to me very very realistic to me and that is uh, what what I try to implement in my martial arts training as well so you know it's not about speed it's about being smooth and being able to do everything right without messing yourself up because if you go too fast you're gonna fumble and, and mess yourself up and to me, that is the most important thing is to not mess yourself up, okay? Um, I, Mike Tyson's coach, Cuss, talks about that. He talks about it's a darn shame when a fighter loses because they defeated themselves, you know? It's that much of a factor. People don't think about it. They always think about, what do I want to do to the bad guy? But they don't think about how much in real life, it doesn't even have to be self-defense or combat. It could be anything. In real life, a lot of times we screw ourselves up so much, you know, whether it's trying to shoot for our goals or dreams or whatever, you'd be surprised at how much you mess yourself up, you know. And so in martial arts, I believe that is the first thing we want to take care of is, is to make sure... When you're using something as dangerous as a knife, that you don't mess yourself up or accidentally put yourself in in uh, ways of harm, you know, because the knife will totally harm anybody, anything, you know. So if you hold it wrong, you could totally hurt yourself with your own knife, and that is what we're trying to avoid here. So uh, yeah, the the other thing is the quick draw. We got to examine. The, the quick draw and um, you know first of all 
we, we all fantasize about that. You know, the bad guy's there, I'm here, and I have to somehow get my weapon out before they do and take them out. And, you know, that that's just seems like that is the ideal self-defense situation. But if you think about it, what you're doing there is playing the speed game. And that is not what we want to do in martial arts. To me, true martial arts is about skill and strategy. Why? Because... In the game of chess, they give you the lesson here that when all things are equal, it comes down to skill and strategy, right? So, you know, I don't know if I'm going to be faster than the other guy. I just don't know, you know? And chances are, if the other guy picked me as a victim, you know, they're physically superior to me. So if they're physically superior to me, then chances are they are faster, stronger, meaner, faster younger, you know, who knows. So I don't want to play that game there because that's, I can't control that, you know, but skill and strategy is something that I can control. And so I want to make sure that the game that I'm playing, I don't play the speed game that I'm playing the speed and strategy game. Okay. So that hopefully that can help people out thinking in those kinds of terms of skill and strategy. The other thing is, um, let's examine the quick draw. The quick draw situation in the wild, wild west, that's a duel. That's a western duel situation where it's a challenge, you know. So, in other words, it's actually a competition, a sport. Even though life is on the line and it's kill or be killed, that is still a sport, like you challenged each other, one person challenged, the other person accepted, they decided to do it on your mark, get set, go kind of thing. So that is a sport. A real life situation is a little bit more organic in a sense that, you know, we were getting into an argument, one guy lost his cool and took out a weapon and attacked the other guy. That's much more organic. It's not, are you ready? I'm ready. All right, let's duke it out. Let's go. That's that's different, you know. So in a, in a real life situation, you know, because it's not a duel, essentially, you know, the speed game, once again, is not as applicable as most people think. So today, I feel like people are wrong, incorrect in a sense, where I think they put too much emphasis on the quick draw. And um, while I do think it's important to be smooth and to be able to take it out, you know, quick and still be accurate and not mess yourself up, all that is important. But I think there's too much of an emphasis and people are thinking about the wrong scenarios, you know. So because in, from my personal experience and, and you know, I, I haven't been in every single experience, so I can't, you know, vouch for vouch for everybody. But in my personal experiences, self-defense wise, and where I felt like, man, I need to get my knife out. It's never been about speed. I've never felt like, oh, I need to be really rapid fast. In fact, more times than not, I've had to be silent, quiet, discreet about it. But I've never had to be fast and, oh, am I not fast enough? I've, I've never been in a situation like that. Uh, personally, okay, um, because the awareness is is there. You you're gonna be aware, and things don't just all of a sudden we're fighting, you know. And now I gotta take it. It's it's that it. You don't just teleport into combat. It could it could happen, you know. Just all of a sudden I got attacked or something. That it's possible, but more times than not, no, you know. So yeah, that's it's just it just hasn't happened. Now, um, yeah, you said that using the knife uh, folded, it adds a new dimension to real-world self-defense. Absolutely, absolutely. So um, in my case, uh, the, the way that I discovered this for, for me personally, way before I even knew about um, the LLC knife and stuff. So for, for me personally, uh, what it was, was in Filipino martial arts, we train with sticks, right? So the stick is like, what, 28 inches long? Okay, it's a single-handed weapon, but it's, you know, it's, it's fairly long. 
because it, it mimics a short sword. So from there, you know, we also have shorter sticks, you know, uh, that might be a foot and a half long or maybe a foot long. And then we have something even shorter where it's just pretty much just the, the size of your fist, maybe just a little bit sticking out from, from either end. Okay. So that to me, the short stick or the palm stick, which is this guy. Okay. So this is a more like a Kubotan style, but it's still, it, this is a palm stick and it has one point and you can see that folding knife in the closed position. That's what it is. It's a palm stick. So Filipino martial arts wise, it works. Also, another thing for me was I was um, really, really going into to depth or going in deep trying to study standard grip versus reverse grip. I was trying to really find out, you know, the pros and cons of each one. And I found out that the reverse grip is safer for you when you get into close range and ground range. Okay. So in long range, standard grip has the advantage, but in close range and ground range, you know, the reverse grip has the advantage. And even more so is you, a folding knife closed was even safer for the individual when you were, um, uh, on the ground and stuff. So for example, if I get a rear naked choke, I'm able to dig the back part here into the back of the neck area and that causes a lot more pressure. So a lot more pain. It makes the choke stronger. It makes the technique even more powerful. Same with the Kimura, same with the Americana and especially something like the guillotine choke where I can now put this right into, you know, the, the jugular right there. It, it enhances your techniques. So that is where the direction that I came from. And then when I saw this one right here, the LLC knife, um, it blew me away. It absolutely blew me away because now when you look at this, you know, when I saw, you know, I, I understood that the folding knife closed is this. But then when I saw this, yeah, not only is it a folding knife, it was like this on steroids. And the reason why I say that is because this one has this one point here. Like I said, in Filipino martial arts, the traditional palm stick has here and here. You know, not saying that you can't with this, but this is flat, right? So there would be two points here and here for the traditional uh, Filipino uh, palm stick. This one has here, here, and then even this one right here. So that's three plus the ramp. So that's why I was like, man, this is like a palm stick on steroids. And yeah, that blew me away, of course. And the concept, you know, using this close, I was like, I get it. I totally get it. But the professor talking about one more thing that, and this thing was completely new for me. And what he talked about was the force continuum. And the force continuum was using this closed okay and then go, when the situation is not resolved then you and and if the situation gets worse then you go to lethal force and because it's already in your hand it's already one step away from deploying the blade which you could use it to hook and get the blade out right there so you could just hook it on anything and boom the blade is instantly out so it's already in your hand because you're using it closed and then all, if the situation worsens, all you need to do is hook it on something, deploy the blade, and there you go. You're ready for lethal force, you know. So that kind of smooth transition is, you know, very special for this knife. Now, the other thing about the force continuum was because if you're using it closed, it's not a knife. This is an impact tool. So think of it as this knife has two capabilities. One is a knife and the other is a self-defense impact tool. So it's like a Swiss army knife. You get a Swiss army knife and you take out the can opener. That's not a knife. It's a can opener. Or if you take out the screwdriver at that point, it is a screwdriver. So this one closed at this point right now, it is an impact tool, you know? So that's what you're using it as. In other words, 
what that that is very significant because that means that you could take it out before lethal force is required. So in that sense, speed wise, this is extremely fast because you're taking it out at the same time that you take this guy out, which is, you know, anytime you're in a self-defense situation, boom, you can take it out. Now, this, however, this needs to come out during lethal force. So if you take this out just because it's a self-defense situation and it's not lethal force situation, you could be in big, big trouble with the law. So, you know, that that's why with something like an Emerson knife, which, you know, is, is known for the quick draw, you got to wait. You actually have to, even though it's fast in deployment, you have to actually wait until lethal force is required. This one, you don't have to. So in that sense, this is actually faster just because of when, when you can take it out, you know, what it does. Those are the things that make it, you know, faster. So that's the force continuum, which was a completely new uh, concept for me. But when I found out about that, once again, it made sense. And I was like, man, that is, that is so freaking awesome, you know. So that, that was excellent for me to, to learn. So anyway, that's it for now. Thank you for viewing. And I will try to get to, to the other comments. I'll, I'll make videos on that. So that's it for now. Thank you for viewing and take care, folks.